Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. It is 20W13A and if I sound a little bit different than normal, I'm kind of a bit under the weather, got a bit of a sore throat, but that has not stopped me from being totally excited about this snapshot. There is a new mob, a new block and lots of really interesting new additions. And first of all, let's talk about the lodestone. This is the new block that you can get if you adventure into the nether. And you need to go there because of how it is crafted. You will need yourself some chiseled stone bricks, but the main ingredient there, the netherite ingot, will allow you to make the lodestone block. So if we look at my hotbar, you might be able to tell what's going on. This block is basically like an anchor point in the world for a compass to point to. Now, normally the compass points towards world spawn, which is in that direction over there. But if I go and right click on a lodestone, then it sets it to this right here and then it points at it which is just amazing. So if I turn around that compass right there, you can see it in my offhand as well as on the hotbar is turning and pointing towards it. Now in survival Minecraft, I think this could be a really fun way to play with friends, you know, point them to locations in the world, things like that, and it's going to have its use in mini games as well. Now some interesting quirks about this block and the compass itself, you can actually have a stack of compasses and then click with a stack of compasses and it changes it to a lodestone compass and obviously it enchants it. Interesting stuff. When you break the block, then your compass is going to freak out, which is probably a temporary bug. Now, when it comes to interacting with this with redstone, you can't move it with pistons. You can power the block, but it has no comparator output reading for any sort of data. In fact, no data is stored inside this block. So when you go and click on it with your compass, and by the way, you can use one that's already been set to location and then change it to another one. I think it is the compass right here that is holding the information about where it is pointing to. This also works across dimensions. This one is pointing to the lodestone compass here and this one is pointing to the one in the nether. You can also use this command to actually see what's going on inside of the item itself and you can see it stores the coordinates and it stores what dimension it's in as well. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is not a new block, but a new way to create a block that's been added in this update. That block is basalt, which in the last update we learned you can turn into polished basalt over here. Beautiful texture for building with. And what you'll need is blue ice, which you can get from these icebergs found in the deep frozen ocean. The other thing you're going to need is soul soil, not to be confused with soul sand. So this setup over here isn't going to work, but this one is. When the lava touches the blue ice with soul soil underneath, it creates basalt. And of course, this means you can automate it, you can mine it with your pick, and you can basically generate basalt out of nothing, which I think is a really cool idea. Another change to the basalt is that you can't make the polished basalt in a furnace anymore. It's now made in a stone cutter, just like the other materials like polished andesite and all of that. Okay, straight up first impressions here. What is this? I love it. This has quite a high resolution for a small mob. It's texture. Look at that face right there. That feels a little bit more like a 32x resource pack. That's something I'll point out. But yeah, here is the new mob and its name is the Strider. <laughs> oh, I had a feeling you could do this. Yep, you can put a saddle on it and you can ride it across the lava. Absolutely beautiful, except we're not going anywhere. So the Strider. This can be commonly found in lava lakes. This is the location where they like to be. This is the location where they spawn. And I summoned one in over here with no AI, so I can look at its properties. It has the same health as a player does. That's 20 hit points or 10 hearts. And it's a peaceful mob. I'm currently in peaceful mode. And if you attack it, it doesn't attack you back. And if you spawn it in on land, it'll just basically make its way over to lava. If you kill this mob, it will drop string. It can drop between two and five and it is affected by the eluting enchantment. And as you see here, it has a baby equivalent. So we can use warped fungus to breed them together. And when this is successful, you actually get the advancement for it, which is something they always seem to forget when they add a new mob. But this time, They've actually done it. You're also probably noticing that they are attracted to the warped fungus. So you can use this to lure them in a direction. Now, unfortunately, this isn't this isn't a lava boat. And I feel like it should be. I'm pressing forward, back, left, right. We don't move anywhere. And the warped fungus doesn't help us navigate as well. 
So, what exactly Mo Yang were intending us to do with this, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I had a feeling it might drop me in the lava. <laughs> oh dear. So I've got to say, having looked at this mob a little closer, it kind of feels rather out of place. I'm not really feeling the textures of this. The shape of the mob isn't particularly charming, and it really does feel quite useless. And it just kind of, they just wander around the lava. I, I, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this mob. I did also learn that they can spawn as a jockey. Ah, it looks like they can spawn in with a jockey as well. What is this, a piglin strider jockey? Looks like it can also have a baby as a jockey as well. So I spawned a silly amount of these and I only saw those two types of jockeys and something else occurred to me as well. For some reason I just didn't spot this earlier but there is a new item and it is a warped fungus on a stick. So now you understand right how we use these. I just jump on your shoulders and now I can tell you which direction to go. And if you're curious, here are the mob's sounds. That's the ambient noise. That's the sound of it dying. Eating. When it's happy. When it's hurt. When it retreats. When it steps. And when it steps on lava. And that, I believe, is just about everything there is to know about this mob at this point in time. Okay, you want to talk about bugs? I have no idea what is going on right now. I have no control over my player. <laughs> what is this? What's going on? This is this is very peculiar. Oh, snapshots. They are buggy, aren't they? There's been some changes to farmer villagers, which we're going to learn about just next. But I'm interrupting my own video to say, if you're not subscribed to this channel and you want to keep up to date with the snapshots, you know what to do. Hit that button. And if you feel like it, hit the bell as well. So an interesting trade to the farmer. When it has excess seeds, it will actually put them into the composter. And that can automatically turn it into bone meal. Now, this really sounds like something that can be used for automation. And hey, we just saw it in action. So I've given this guy tons of seeds. And now he's chucking them into the composter. Now, it doesn't look like he does this very often. But I'm sure some of the brainiacs in the Minecraft community are going to figure out amazing ways to exploit this. And create bone meal from these villagers. And look, we've got our first piece. Now you might have noticed that that villager actually picked it up himself. So if I chuck some more down on the ground. There we go. It picked up the bone meal. And we should see it hold the bone meal in its hands and use it on the crops. Hey, there we go. Did you see it? He made the crops grow. It also says when they have excess wheat that they'll actually share this wheat with other farmers. So that they can make bread together. So I've done this old creative mode trick to shower them with wheat. And I think they've all filled up their inventories now. And I've waited for a while and I haven't really seen them do anything with that wheat. But there you go. Very powerful new changes to the farming villager mob. So other changes in this snapshot. You can now use a dispenser activated by redstone. It's got glowstone inside of it. And you can use that to charge up your respawn anchor. Which was added in one of the previous snapshots. When bartering with piglins, there's now an increased likelihood of getting the soul speed enchantment. Mining never gold ore will now yield experience points. There you go, we just got some. The crimson and warped wood types will no longer be able to be used as fuel inside of a furnace. I'm, I'm clicking here, I can't put it in. They can now be used to craft the smoker and the campfire where before they couldn't. And their fence types are now capable of connecting with other fence types. The mysterious jigsaw block got an update with some new features and whatnot, but I really don't understand any of this stuff. So if you want to know about that change, go to the link in the description to read the official change log. Now last snapshot, there were some changes to fishing to target AFK fishing farms, making it difficult to get treasure from them and Lily pads were one of the things that could invalidate that. You're now actually going to be able to get treasure if a lily pad is nearby. However, more parameters have been put in place to make making fishing farms difficult. And so you might see the community rise to the challenge again. Or this might actually be the nail in the coffin of the AFK fishing farm. There it is. There it is. This is something I missed from last week's snapshot. The piglins can actually kind of team up riding a baby hoglin. And they can actually stack three of them on top of each other, which is a really nice little Easter egg right there. That is so cute and adorable. 
And another thing they added from last week was these splashes right here on the main menu are all related to advice regarding the coronavirus and COVID-19. So I really don't want to politicize my snapshot videos or make them about anything else, but right now the world is in a state of crisis. We are going through a pandemic and I really hope that all of you out there are taking this seriously. I know there are some people that believe it is not as big deal as others are making it out to be. So I encourage you to take it seriously, to listen to your governments and health organizations. Make sure that you're staying at home if you can, practicing social distancing and washing your hands regularly. This is a serious, serious thing that we're all going through together and we will get through it. It's what we do. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.